Yeah, I came right through yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> you said you was going to dress up. I was like, no, I ain't going to dress up. No, I dress up. I ain't going to wear a t-shirt. Let's see. So we're live here on the Mommy Your Business page. Let's see. We got a low network connection on mine for some reason. So let's see. But it looks like we're, well, it looks like we're live. Let's see. How can I do it from there? Yeah, let's see. I'll, I'll know if people start jumping on that. If we're live here. Yep, yep, we're live. They're jumping on. Miss Jackson, hey, how you doing? Hi. So glad you could join us on this fantastic Friday right before what is referred to as the Memorial Day holiday weekend. Shannon, how you doing? What's going on? Good afternoon to you. Yeah, everybody's jumping on Angel. Angel was the one that wanted the reminder. I know. So, Hi, Angel. Hey, Sunshine. So I made sure to tag her so she get all the reminders that she needs. <laughs> Chris Eagleston, what's going on? Memphis to L.A. connection. I know, I was about to say hi, Chris. Yeah, doing this thing out in L.A., definitely. I see. Uh, oh, yeah, you say you like that shirt. Yeah, it's my main shirt. Shout out to Elliot, uh, salesman, uh, main uh, T-shirts. That's my guy, man. So I always make sure to support him, uh, Ernest Fields, everybody that's got their T-shirt game going, man. I try to make sure to, to support that as much as possible. Absolutely. As much as possible. Elliot's so. a great guy. Shout out to Elliot. Yeah, shout out to Elliot. Just because I love him. I've been giving him a hard time <laughs> oh, yeah. lately. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's been he's been taking a few L's. Uh, a I know. Times, I gave man, him two bro. of them yesterday. Sorry, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Elliot, stay, he stays in there, takes it on the chin. So yeah, he does. Definitely. Yeah. Nicole, how you doing? Uh, thank you for uh, jumping on. And uh, looks like some folks. Uh, Yolanda. Hey, Yolanda, how you doing? What's going on? So we kind of double dip in the day. We're on uh, the Mind Your Business podcast page and we're on my page. Uh, Angel says, hey, y'all. Hey, so sweetie. what's going on? Listen, Champ Run, the Mind Your Business podcast. Uh, you know we come to you every Friday afternoon. Entrepreneurship, real estate, trending news. There's no business like minding your own. So listen, you guys are in store for a great show. We're getting ready to kick off the recording of the podcast but you know how i like to do i like to get you guys uh started first here on facebook live jamal whitlow what's going on man jumping on had jamal here man that was a great show a couple weeks ago jamal so i appreciate that love uh shay's jumped on she says hello and uh <laughs> she's kind of doing this so she's in uh, many spaces at uh, at once which yeah. is good anita how you doing good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon to everybody Hey, listen, we're getting ready to start, again, the recording of the podcast. I, I know people have been waiting ever since I've been promoting this show. I know everybody's been uh, sharing and uh, liking the graphic. I put it on LinkedIn, and then all the wolves jump on. Uh, y'all, all the guys jumping on, I guess, because of Shay. So I know how y'all are. So y'all, y'all, y'all been waiting and stuff. Dewan Hendricks, what's going on? Elliot. Hey, What's Dewan. going on, Elliot, man? You know what we do? We've already shouted you out. We're over you now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shay should be giving you a hard time, Elliot. I'm sorry. Bad, so we have to take up uh, for you, man. Oh, Elliot said you got that trouble make on the show. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it. And Dewan said, what's Shay Brown talking about? Oh, everything. Yeah, we talking about everything, man. We finna get into it. We about to get into it. Uh, matter of fact, with no delay. Since, since y'all done jumped on, y'all giving me a hard time already. So let me go ahead and get this thing cracking. Looks like some more. Anita, Yolanda. Oh, she said hello. Oh, thank you so much, Yolanda. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's really cool. Let's see, man. What's going on with my, my deal here? Lynette, what's going on, girl? How you doing? Know it's a party once Lynette jumps. Let me see. Oh, okay. They want me to go through all this. Whatever. Ashley, let's discuss the difference between PR and marketing. Uh, we definitely go get into that, uh, Demar. We're going to get into that because, uh, as you know, on this particular podcast, I like to make sure that we have good, clean definitions and that we're not uh, 
just flap it in the breeze with you know everybody thinking you know things in different uh, you know lanes and different understandings. It's, it's hard to get that when everybody's thinking taking one term and thinking something different. So All right. So feel free to ask your questions in the comment section. Um, that way, if we get caught up talking, Ron and I both like to talk a lot. We can yeah. look up every that, now and again and definitely. make sure we touch on those. Yeah, definitely. So most definitely. So. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. Yeah, Lynette says it's all good. Daryl, what's going on? Sancia, what's going on, girl? How you doing? Hey, listen, uh, the Money Your Business podcast is brought to you every week by Brooks Brothers Consulting. Listen, Brooks Brothers Consulting started June of 2013 with my great brother, younger brother, Philip. And we do two main uh, areas that we like to focus on. One is leadership talent development with new managers or existing managers. So if you're uh, new into leadership, whether at the executive level, the director level, or the manager level, or if you've been in those roles and you're new to your company, one of the things that you have to make sure to ensure your success of you and your team is that you have the proper critical thinking skills and the proper advocacy and the proper mentor that more than likely your senior executives aren't going to provide you. Typically when you're promoted to leadership, they show you the office, they uh, show you the restroom, and then that's pretty much it. And they expect uh, today's report as of yesterday. Don't fall into that rut. You need to make sure that you have the proper advocacy, the proper support, and leverage our over 20 years of management uh, experience up to the executive level. Give me a call, 901-808-3801, 901-808-3801, and you can visit www.brooksbrothersconsulting.com. I'm working with actually three new companies now, so I'm starting to get a full plate. Um, recently worked with Ronstadt. Uh, on a, a great opportunity, so shout out to them here in the Memphis area. And I can do the same for you, whether on an individual level or come to your company. Uh, the second thing we do is alternative financing. So, uh, listen, we're, we don't sell debt. What we do is we provide you the funding to be able to get the asset that helps you build your legacy, whether that's through rental property, uh, purchasing equipment, purchasing vehicles, whether that's factoring, if you're a newer company and you need to be able to you know, uh, finance invoices and things like that. I've got a network of lenders that are ready to work with you. Um, very low rates, uh, low fees. Um, there's no application fee or anything like that. So you need to get with me. That's Brooks Brothers Consulting. 901-808-3801, www.brooksbrothersconsulting.com. Listen, we're at episode 48. I'm so excited. I've got a great guest that I'm going to introduce to you. Yeah, yeah, so we're still go yeah, we're still going. What it'll do is it'll keep going even when it does that. It just keeps recording. So, okay, cool. Christina, what's going on? Ms. Marshall, you know it, it's a party when Ms. Marshall show up. KJ, Kennedy Johnson, what's going on, brother? Hey, Kennedy. Josh, Josh, what's up, man? Great show uh, this morning. Josh Bidget uh, on the sports show this morning. Uh, great show this morning, man. I, I definitely uh, shout you out and salute you. Tell Josh don't start anything today. I've known <laughs> uh, you Josh know for he, a while. Oh, Lord. Uh, you, know what he, you know he is. Rod, what's going on, brother? Rod Selman, uh, STF Financial. Uh, Kel, what's going on? Uh, we're just cycling through the music, and then we're going to get uh, started here. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and bring it back now. All right, I'm your host, Champ Ron. This is the Minding Your Business podcast. Listen, we're coming to you live see what the Grizzlies are going to do and what your favorite NBA team is going to do. If you're not into basketball, come on out anyway. Uh, there's going to be a few surprises. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what those are, but there's going to be a couple surprises uh, that you, you'll be interested in. And we're going to network and have a good time. We're going, we're going to record the 50th episode. I'd love for everybody that's been on the show, if you're able to stop by, uh, stop by and, uh, and do so. And just uh, come have a good time at the lounge. It's going to be great food, great drinks, and great environment. 5.30. Yep, so 5.30 is when we're going to start. Uh, feel free to come by anytime that evening uh, as your schedule allows. And, man, let's have a good time, and we're going to enjoy the 50th episode, enjoy some good food, uh, talk a lot of noise, watch the NBA <laughs> draft, and uh, do what we do. Right. And so, again, uh, Thursday, June the 21st, put on your calendar, 5.30 p.m., 1299 Madison Avenue at Slice of Soul Pizza Lounge. Good deal. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Listen, I've um, for the last few days I've been promoting this show, and with my special guest, and, and y'all surprised me a little bit. Y'all 
getting ready for the show, and I really appreciate it. I think it has way less to do to me with me and more to do with my guests. You know, so I definitely understand that. Y'all, y'all, y'all in here peeping. I see you know, the you know, them two eyed little emojis peeping around on all my posts every time I post it up. But listen, yo, know, thank y'all for joining so much. There's been so much going on in the news. Um, you've got uh, the whole thing with the NFL. You've got now they jumping on Morgan Freeman. Um, you still got the y'all still jumping on the Kanye stuff. On my Facebook feed, y'all worried about whose plate y'all go serve this weekend, and all this kind of stuff. It's like, man, y'all been in y'all y'all normal form this week on my Facebook feed, <laughs> which has been funny. It's had some nice, sometimes contentious, uh, but friendly uh, conversation go back and forth with some people. It's which been is, intense. It definitely has. It's been <laughs> intense. So y'all don't get in trouble this weekend. Uh, over your Facebook. Or uh, them plates. Yeah, or them plates. Yeah, make sure uh, fix the plate that you go fix. And, and then, sit down somewhere. And let, that, and let that be what it's going to be. <laughs> Listen, I've got Shay Brown with me today. Shay Brown. Thanks, Royal gosh. Kingdom PR Agency. And listen, I, I've, I've been following her for some time. Uh, she's been a big supporter of things that I've done in the past and with businesses and things like that, which I greatly appreciate. But thank you so much for joining the no, podcast. Well, I'm humbled. It's always exciting when people want me on this show. I'm like, why? Do you, what do you want to hear from me? You know? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh we want to hear a whole lot today. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let me let me let's jump right in. Okay. So, you know, for those that have been, you know, maybe been hiding under a rock, or maybe they deactivated their Facebook page a long time ago, or maybe they just don't. Uh, you know, engage the way maybe they should, okay. and maybe they're not familiar with you. Tell us who Shea Brown is. Well, I'm a lot of things. I'm a queen. I'm a, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, well, all, that, you know, all true. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, well, let's see. Where do you want me to start? As far as my business or just me? Yeah, start professionally. Okay. Just kind of, you know, with yourself, how you kind of have grown to, to where you are today. Right, cool. Well, uh, as Ron said, I am the founder and CEO of Royal Kingdom PR Agency. I started uh, the company back in July of 2010. Okay. Um, I was in corporate America at the time. I've worked in corporate sales management. I've worked um, for a cable giant here that shall go nameless because that didn't go very well. <laughs> um, that's how I met a lot of these amazing people who are online uh, yeah. now watching us. Um, I've worked in advertising and marketing companies here, but it wasn't until I ran into Les Brown back in July of 2009 right. at the Fire of the Holy Spirit conference with Bishop uh, Porter and uh, Paula White and all of those uh, individuals came down. Yeah, yeah, came down to the Cannon Center and he overheard me speaking to his son Calvin because I was really just trying to get to the man. I wasn't trying to go through all the nuances of, right. of his son and all of that. And he was taking a nap at the time and he kind of snuck up on me. And he was taking a nap. Uh, yeah, he was taking a nap. <laughs> Les is old. I love him right. to death, but he's old then and he's older now. Right. Um, and he uh, snuck up on me and heard me having a conversation with his son and he was just really intrigued. That's what okay. I had to say, because at that time, um, Jacqueline Carr was there and he actually brought both of us up on stage and introduced us and just said, you know, I see millionaires in the making, I see some amazing things, and took my business card, scratched all through it and said, you're more than this. You're, I've been listening to you, you know, unknowingly, you know, you're a communicator, you're an orator, you're a marketing specialist, and all these things I didn't think about. I was just thinking about, you know, that corporate rat race, climbing up, how much money I can make, I mean, missions were crazy right. you know at the time you know I was in my mid to, to later 20s you know and making six figures and who in the world wanted to leave that with no children no husband and you know he was yeah. like this is not the life for you he was like I can tell you're just like me and I said what does that mean he said you're unemployable if you do just enough to keep from getting fired they're just nice enough to keep <laughs> you from quitting he was right. like because you're a producer right. and I got to thinking about that and it really resonated with me and uh, a few months after well a few weeks actually after meeting him he um, called me out of the blue okay. and told me this is your most famous cousin because Brown and Brown obviously. Right, right, right. And he invited me out to LA and I did go and I got to meet LL Cool J and a bunch of other venture capitalists and ended up meeting his publicist and I didn't know what PR really was at the time. I knew what marketing was, I knew what advertising was, you know, I knew what event management was, but I didn't know what PR was. Met his publicist. I really loved what she did, how she flowed through the room, and asked her who she was and what her responsibilities were. And from there, you know, I went home and started researching everything I could about PR, right. and realized that the silos that I was already working with then, you know, were well connected to yeah. what she was doing. It was just, you know, a different discipline of, of marketing. 
and um, ended up immediately Googling, you know, names, prayed and fasted for it, and Royal Kingdom is what came to me, and, you know, the color is what had been prophesied to me already, and in October of 2011, I left corporate America um, after just a, uh, not a coming to a meeting of the minds in corporate America between the, the, the have and have not, so right. to speak. And uh, I haven't looked back since. I've been full time since October of 2011. Um, so I guess I'm coming up on my seven year anniversary in yeah. full time entrepreneurship, but in business, uh, eight years. And man, I, I enjoy it, you know? And so yeah. since then, obviously, things have changed. I've grown the business, grown additional brands, um, Luxor Media, which I'll talk more about, and yeah. Fit Smart Life, which I'll also speak more about. Um, I've had a son since then, so my, my responsibilities and roles have changed as an of entrepreneur and, and what part motivates me. Yeah, part of the evolution. So yeah. that's that's a little bit about me, and uh, you know, I'd like to still think I'm, uh, you know, I'm that I'm that young, fresh faced, you know, naive you naive girl, you know, that I once was, because it keeps you humble, keeps you on your toes. But sometimes you just know what you know over the course of the years, and, and you don't want people to treat you like that, even though you try to. You know, you have people think that, hey, you know, I'm still at ground level, but you know, you, you reach a certain level of experience and success and you want to be treated as such. Absolutely. So, and, and that's one thing, you know, that we can get more on, but uh, that's kind of what brought me here, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Shay, t t you, you touched on a lot of different things, but one of the things that kind of stood out to me was your transition from corporate America where you were doing very well and some people they may not be doing as well or they're doing very well they want to get into entrepreneurship but they're fearful of letting go yeah right and I don't know did you experience a kind of a concern of letting go because sometimes for many people at the end of the day as like I said you mentioned you were you know, single and didn't quite have as many responsibilities for some people they may be doing well but then they've got kids they got a spouse they got a mortgage they got a couple car loan payments. Right. They've got student Hi, loan debt. Yeah, what's up, Chris? <laughs> uh, student loan debt. I mean, all these different things. So they're sitting there and they're like, you know, I love to be able to do what Shay's doing, but I can't let this go, even though they treat me like sugar honey iced tea and, and all this kind of thing. So talk about your, that transition period and what did you need to see that helped you make that decision? You know, people ask me this quite a bit. You, you'd be surprised. It's probably one of the top two, three questions that I have. Yeah. I think for me, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you will Thank let you. go. I mean, right. as cliche as it sounds, you really will. When you get tired of being devalued, underappreciated, underpaid, you know, underaccepted, you know, you will. You'll let go. And I right. think Les said it perfectly when he said, if you don't move on life, life will move on you and then you will be dragged. Yeah. So either let go or be dragged. Yeah. And that's where I got to a point. I got to a point where I just started doing the math. We all claim we're not mathematicians. We're not good at math. We're not good at science, except for when people owe us. So I got to the point where I was thinking, I started doing the math. I said, okay, I'm bring, producing this many sales. It's producing this type of revenue for this many years. I'm working this many hours. This is happening over a course of three months, six months, 12 months. And I started doing the math versus what they were paying me, regardless if it was close to six figures or six figures versus what they were actually making off of me. Yeah. And I got to thinking, it wasn't even a percentage. So, yeah, you don't mind paying us 80000 You don't mind paying us 90000 You don't mind paying us $100,000 a year. You don't mind giving us expense yeah. accounts and all that. You know why? Because you literally made millions off of me in one month. Right. That's not even a fraction of what I felt like was owed to me. Yeah. And so I got to the point where I knew that I could do better. Right. And when you know you can do better, then you start planning. So many people are afraid because they don't know where to start. Right. Sometimes you just have to get started. You'll never move if you don't take a step. Yeah, you gotta take you a know, step. You have to take you a step. Take step. So for me, it was the planning. When I got to the point where I could see that upward movement wasn't the game, because why would they want to move up a producer? You're selling. That means if they move you upward, you won't sell. You won't make any money. And I started getting the revelation early on. They're never going to promote me because I'm a closer. I even had a manager tell me one time, and, and, it, and it used to piss me off, and we'll talk about it in the Me Too movement. He would tell me and some of my colleagues on here that have worked with me that are on here could tell you, go put on your quota skirt today. Yeah. Quota skirt meaning I want you to go to all the automotive shops. I want you to go to all the mail-based businesses. Put on your pencil skirt. Close right. deals. Now, I've heard that in a different term, but I haven't yeah, heard it. put on your quota skirt. <laughs> and when I realized this yeah, is, he was always going to use me as that struggling monkey you know, that puppet, 
I start realizing there's never going to be an opportunity for advancement here. Mm -hmm. I'm running all your events. I'm running all your trade shows. I'm, you know, I'm dividing the leads. I'm the only one that really understands how to run these things properly and the only one you can really count on and dependable enough to be fair, equitable, to show up, to set up, close down, break down, all those types of things. And I started thinking, why? If I was them, I wouldn't let me go either. I wouldn't let me promote either. And so then it started, it started making me bitter. And so I started hating the sight of going to the job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And I cherry pick and pocket all my leads until right before right. quota, you know, like the last week. And then I shoved through. Shoved and right. then he'd be like, I know you have more than this. I know you've been holding on to these. And I would do it every single month. And when I got to the point where I felt like I couldn't give my best anymore, I said, I'm going to have to put an exit strategy together. Yeah. So many people are afraid to put an exit strategy together because they're afraid of the unknown. Right. The reason you're afraid of the unknown is because you like the comfort of what's yeah. there. You don't yeah. want to have to do all the legwork. It's easy because guess what? They have the funding, they have the operations, they have the computers, they have the, the technology, much, they have the up. infrastructure. Yeah, you don't have to think, you just show up. Yeah. And I think for some people, half the battle in entrepreneurship is showing up. They don't want to be disciplined enough to get up on time. They don't mm. want to be disciplined enough to work on the weekends. Mm. They don't want to be disciplined enough to say, I'm not going to get my hair done. Like, it's been two weeks since I got my nails done. Don't look at my nails, people. I know I'm going to keep <laughs> You know, but I'm going when I leave here. Right. Like it was a, it, it's, it's choices that you have to make, you right. know. It's it's the reinvestment into your own business. You want other people to invest in you, but you don't want to invest in yourself. That's not how that works. I can legitimately, my tax um, preparer can tell you, I've spent over $200,000 in my business in reinvestment. Yeah. You know, I have some things I'm doing now that are going to cost me, gonna cost me $34,000. But, it, you know, to do some things with the PGA. But the kind of return that I will get out of that. I'm betting on me. Most people are afraid to bet on themselves because they know themselves. Think about it. Yeah. They know themselves. Yeah, I'm not going to get up at 6 a.m. every day and be prepared to work. I'm not yeah. going to work out so that I can get all these, you know, my brain moving and all the oxygen in here. I'm not going to eat properly, so I'm going to be sluggish. I'm going to cram coffee down all day. And I love coffee, like the right. next person. You know, I'm not, gonna, uh, I'm not going to create work-life balance so that I can be, you know, in my best self when I'm working. I know me. So guess what? I'm afraid to let go, not because I can't do it, but because I will choose not to do it because right. I'm my own boss now. Yeah, because they want to they invest in themselves. Yeah. Everything you just said is, they, I, they know themselves that they're not going to They know themselves. Right. And I have to they're get to that point. I know myself. And that's why I knew myself. And I knew if I didn't leave corporate America, I knew I was either going to catch a case <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the dog on the tree. I was going to catch one. I'm telling you. I thank God for my first lady, right. sister Thompson, Opal Thompson. Well, I guess man, they sent you out in the quarter score. Yeah, she sent me on the quarter score. And there were a couple of times I had to let them know, like, right. here's my card. Get me be- Here's my belt. I'm going to call my mom once I get there because right. it became that crucial. Yeah. When it becomes that crucial where you're going to lose yourself, your integrity, and everything that your family has, you know, you know, uh, instilled in you, it's time to go. And I think for yeah. most people, the leap is the fear that they can't maintain. The reason you can't maintain is because you're not willing to do anything different. Right. You know, Fred Smith, um, you know, the Roberts that own Comcast, you know, all mm-hmm. these celebrities that you see, that when they talk about Beyonce, no one has a work ethic like her, she bet on herself. Who would have thunk when she left the group, you right. know, that she would be able to do what she's been able to achieve, but yeah, she's exactly. bet on herself. Exactly. And so I think for me, it's the fact that I was stubborn enough to be disciplined enough to say, screw all of you. I'm going to make this work. And then I put a plan in place. I didn't just hop and leap. I started saying, okay, I'm going to need this much money. This is what my bills look like. I devised a 10 year strategy and I was able to leap in 18 months. And see, that's why, and you've said that word a few times, Shay, which is the word strategy, mm-hmm. which is you didn't just, you know, some people jump on the other side of it where they just yeah. jump and leave stuff and don't have a plan right. and they don't account for the, the, the runway or the, the time piece mm-hmm. of it. And so it's interesting that you say that in that you were bold enough to be able to do it, right. but the big thing was is that you were able to put a strategy in place right. to execute on it. Right. So, and you have to because if you go out there and flail it and think you're going to wing it just because you're talented, mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, I know many people who are, who are more successful because they understand how to, work, how to operate within silos and ecosystems. Mm. It's a system. Right. If you do not have a system in place, you're going to fail because you won't know what to do with the first challenge that doesn't match up with your talent. Yeah, when the obstacle comes yeah. up. Well, you know, I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how great of a salesperson you are. I don't care how great of a marketing person you are. I don't care how great of a financial expert you are. 
if you do not understand business operations mm -hmm. and how to work within that silo, you're dead. Right. Because what happens when that first client who's paying you $25,000 a month doesn't pay? What are you going to do? Yeah. So exactly. you have to have a contingency plan, but you have to put that in place. And when you put those business plans and those strategies and go-to-market strategies, is what we call it, in place, that's when you can account for the, if it doesn't work out, this is my next move, so that you're not stuck there, sitting there, beating your head against the wall. How am I going to pay mortgage? How am I going to pay rent? How am I going to pay my life bill? How am I going to pay the kids take care? You should have thought about that. I always said when I left, yes. I had a strategy, A, B, C, and D. Now, I never thought I'd be able to use it, but I've had to even use E before, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That wasn't <laughs> right. something I came up with, but I had to be quick on my feet, Yeah. you know? But I understood that this might not always go the way that I think it right. ought to go. And so taking that leap starts with you and, and, and being honest with yourself. Are you disciplined enough to do this? Yeah. And if you're not, be honest with yourself and stay there until you are. Right. The second thing is to have a plan. Are you willing to follow the plan? Or are mm -hmm. you going to do your own thing the first time it doesn't work out? You know, right. you in phase one, you right. abandon the plan. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't abort the mission. Stay focused. And then the third thing is collaboration is the name of the game. If you are the type of person that wants everything your way, mm. your company always has to be the forefront. Mm. Your company always has to Let be me, the, the main name. You're dead like in the freaking water. I'd rather be. I heard, some brown in this. Well, I'm yeah, right. <laughs> I heard Earl G. Gray say several years ago, and I remember I was at the event with Nikki Brown. I remember Dewan being there and Elliot McKinney and everybody else. Right. Where Earl G. Gray said at the um, at the economic development fair, mm -hmm. he said, especially with us in minority businesses, he said we're so concerned about being the CEO of a hundred thousand dollar business that we'll miss the opportunity to be the janitor in a hundred million dollar business. Mm -hmm. And I said that is so true. I don't care. Call me whatever you want to. Just run me my money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Business, you're in business to follow your passion and to make money. Well, and that's what happens a lot of times in our community, in our nation, is that everybody wants to be the CEO of whatever right. crumb that they have. Because they, it has to be about them. It has to be about their idea. Ego. Their business. Exactly. Ego, Ego shallowness, materialistic, back, all those kind of things that come into play. So when you say that, that really resonates because and some people say that, and I always hate when people say that, that it's a Memphis mentality. You've been, you know, and lived in different places right. and things like that. You know, I certainly have, and you know, that's a people thing. Yeah, it is. It's not always just a, you know people that have only been in Memphis only have that as a reference. Yeah. Point, but you know, that's a people thing. Yeah, to, it is. To a very extent. It is. But you know, I find that people, you know, they, they have to have this little small ownership. They they have to have their own little pizza pie, mm -hmm. even though it's a, it's a pebble, instead of having one large slice. You and that's know what it. I mean? And being a part of that, so and you're right about the discipline piece, and I talk about this on the show all the time. Shay is people don't they know they don't have the discipline, and they're not willing to then connect with people to invest in themselves it's, to even help help, help take that. It's called the U economy. That's what it's called. Yeah. So about two years ago, in July of 2016, and if anybody wants it, I'm happy to share with you. USA Today and Success Magazine did a spotlight on me. And I didn't never share this because, you know, sometimes people hate for no reason here. And, and I didn't want to make it a big deal because that, that year I had been getting awards from everywhere. Yeah. Uh, the Women's Economic Forum out of India gave me a fashion uh, PR innovation award. Mm. And it was just a good year, you know, right. financially. It was a good year. Business-wise, it was just a good year. And they did a piece on me called The You Economy. Um, and it talks about how you create an ecosystem of collaboration as freelancers, individuals, solopreneurs, small businesses to compete with the larger contracts. Right. And they asked me, how was I able to compete with larger clients? Because I've been able to work with companies like Reebok Watches, Twin Lab, which is the, the largest supplements company in the world. I was the PR director for them. I helped secure the Reebok Watches deal um, and, the, and the retail partnership that they had with Kohl's. They flew me to um, New York, to Manhattan. We were in a hotel room and we did a big Skype session. Right. And it was Macy's, Dealers, and Kohl's. And they wanted someone who understood the urban millennial market. I'm an urban millennial. Right. So at the time, obviously, Rick Ross was doing the punk watches and all that kind of stuff. And they yeah. needed me, you know, to be that voice of reason, to come from that background, to have that experience, but also to be able to implement that as part of a go to market strategy and to choose that retailer. Now, if I thought, and I operated under another PR firm because they didn't have anyone in their PR firm who understood that demo. Yeah. They hired me. It could have been about me. They they hired the company. Reebok Watches hired the PR firm, and we worked together for several months on that project because of my experience. And they made no bones to tell me about it. 
but it was under the realm of the other people. I, mean, I could have hit, 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 hit my chest, but the bottom line was, I wasn't scalable to handle everything that they needed. I had a small team of three or four, so it's either take a part of something or get all of nothing. Right. I operated, I, I opted to operate underneath their company, even though maintaining my own autonomy as a company, i.e. the U economy, get paid, get the experience, get the get the relationship and the references as the PR director for Reebok Watches. So when right. people ask me, have you worked with these types of accounts, these types of budgets, these types of connections, I can say yes. Yeah. And all because I had to put ego to the side to learn if I don't tell if you guys don't get anything else from me, learn about the U economy. Yeah. You can compete with bigger projects, bigger brands, bigger companies, learning to collaborate, but as an individual. You know, mm -hmm. those cross pollination and strategic partnerships are vital to your business growth. Right. You know, they really are. So, yeah. you know, uh, look up the term U economy. Like I said, Success Magazine, USA Today, they've done a lot on it. There's been a lot of study. You know, that's where the world is. If you don't learn to collaborate, you know, with people who have different uh, silos than you or different expertise than you, you're going to have a problem. So don't find people just so you can outshine them. Oh, well, I want another PR person to join me. Right. No, go find someone who specializes in, in, in financials. Find someone who specializes in digital marketing. Find someone who specializes in, in all the things that you can't do and create a strong unit so that when you go bid on these projects together or, so, or you win a project, you can handle it and you can scale accordingly. Because right. if you do not, and everybody has the same... Um, has the same uh, skill set, it still leaves you in the same position, yeah. you know? So find people who are good at what they do, and like my mom says, put every ace in its place. And then you find your business, you know? And you, you manage it, and like you manage people, you manage the expectations, and that's what I've found has been so successful. And I've done that over and over and over again. Sometimes yeah. I'm the lead PR yeah. agency, sometimes I'm taking my cues from someone else, you know? And we've got our own you know, partnership and, and contracts going on. And I tell them what I am and what I'm not going to do, and right. we hold our expectations based on, you know, what the scope of the work is. Exactly. But I'm never too good to think I'm that I can't join another marketing firm or, or PR agency or, or whomever or have someone come and help me because we're here to do a job for the client. Right. You know, and that's all that matters. I'm still my own boss. They don't tell me what to do. They don't tell me what hours to work. We put together deliverables, the scope of the work, expectations, benchmarks, and we work accordingly. Yeah. And then I still get to keep, you know, my success. But you're paying me. Now, if the client has a problem, they're going to come to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you just gave, what you just gave in about five minutes is probably several sessions that many consultants would give that charge whatever they yeah. charge for an hour. Now, I know what you do. just gave. Now, I know what we do, Ron. <laughs> but right. for you. But for you. <laughs> for the podcast. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> y'all just got some, some really good value right there. So, let's get into with, with your uh, particular brand, Shay. And, you know, you mentioned three different brands. Okay. You know, talk about how they're interrelated. And then also, if you could, define for people, because y'all y'all know you're on the show, I'm big on definition. Um, define the, what is public relations and how is it different from marketing and advertising? Because I, you know, a lot of this, with the advent of social media that and the internet, it's allowed people to get into business, maybe a little more streamlined, and, uh, certainly much more cost effective than they could in the past. Mm -hmm. you, know, you will not remember a day when, you know, you know, to get in business, you had to you know, get a venue, you had to, you know, print, and, you know, run around and you know, sell things out of trunks and oh, run God, all yeah. over. Yeah. So now you got the internet. Mm -hmm. So you know, define, you know, and, you know, connect your businesses for us, and then define public relations to marketing. Okay, sure. Well, Royal Kingdom PR handles mainly publicity, anything press, media related, media training, um, satellite media tours, all that kind of stuff. Uh, anything that deals with the from the from the media to the controlling the messaging, the content development, that's kind of where I focus. Um, within Royal Kingdom PR, I've gotten very tight on the types of clients that I take. So generally, I will take tech, sports, fitness, wellness, um, luxury, and then if I do a one-off, you know, like agriculture or something like that, it has to be like part of something that I, I can do, like crowdfunding or strategic partnerships or something along those lines. Right, but right. those are one-off chances, and I mainly stay in that. And, and then uh, lifestyle, wellness and beauty, okay. food and beverage. That's all I do. Now with Luxor Media, Luxor Media is the media production arm of uh, Royal Kingdom PR and Fit Smart Life, which I talked about. So we do everything from the, all the digital stuff goes through Luxor Media. Okay. Um, all of the event production and logistics go through Luxor Media because we do everything from front of the house to the back of the house. Um, and we also do sponsorship development, which a lot of companies don't do, but we understand how to bring brands on board. 
and how to align them, you know, with events and for, you know, an influencer. Right. Um, and within that, um, we focus on leveraging um, different business modalities like social media marketing, uh, PR, and all of that, you know, to create awareness and exposure around those events. So mainly Luxor is events related, sure. both online and offline. Gotcha. Then uh, Fit Smart Life is the arm that focuses specifically and only on health, wellness, uh, nutrition, sports. That's it. And like you know, tech as it relates to those other those, you know, you know particular yeah, lanes. those particular yeah. lanes. Yeah. And um, within that, it's also an influencer agency. So the people that are on board are you know actual individuals. So they're pro athletes, nutritionists, dietitians, um, you know, health and wellness providers, that type of thing. Um, so we can stay within that ecosystem, you know, right. right there. And what we do is we produce both uh, online, offline media tours, both co-op media tours uh, and satellite media tours, um, aligning those brands with each of those influencers so that they, A, get the revenue streams, you know, because we're obviously driving traffic and utilizing our platforms, but they also get the exposure, you know, because they're leveraging their, their audience, their networks, their demographics, and we make sure that they line up. So if a snack bar is looking for, you know, young athletes that are between the ages of 16 and 34 and, you know, they, they look up to pro athletes, you know, right. their sports, you know, they do a sport at school, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, we'll have someone like Cliff Brown, who, full disclosure, that's my brother as well, but he's a client. Right. And, uh, you know, he used to work for the Cincinnati Bengals. Now he's a pro athlete trainer, um, NFL, right. MLB, uh, you name it, NBA. Um, and recently soccer so I'll go to him and say okay I either want one of your guys or can you do this and I'll position that as a part of Fit Smart Life and say this is what we do and I'll create a whole tour uh, where media they get the media exposure because the athletes or you know or Cliff is you know promoting the brand sponsoring it and then they'll come out and either cover it and then they get the brand product integration because of that you know so they hire us to do that so we do all the production stuff but that goes through Luxor so everything works differently what I've learned in business is you don't have to keep everything under one umbrella learn to dissect your businesses so that when you create your strategies your both go-to-market strategies your business plans your marketing plans you can focus on true research and development you know the R&D is important so now if I'm thinking about fit smart life I'm only focusing on brands in this department this age group this audience this location, this you know, modality is all I need to focus on. If I'm focusing on Luxor Media, I'm focusing only on event spaces. So whether it's the Oscars or the or the SBs or the Grammys, I know what kind of people you know tune into those types of things. What that audience looks like. If I'm right. dealing with Royal Kingdom PR, I know the types of clients that I'm dealing with. If I'm, if I'm uh, consulting people about food and beverage products, this, that, the third, I understand. So it gives me an opportunity to focus on each individual industry or or lane. Right. And then the plans match accordingly, so I don't have to keep crossing over. And then I have teams that handle each of those various groups because everybody can't do sports, right. but everybody can't do lifestyle and beauty, yeah. or everybody can't do events. And you know, most people they you know share, they stick that all under one group. No. So they'll go and they'll create. Uh, and you know how our folks are. You know, we talk about everyone won't be sick. So they'll go create uh, shade brown enterprises, right? Yes. And then dump a hundred yes. different initiatives under that so whether you go to their website or when they promote on Facebook they promote a hundred different things that they do hey you know we'll, we'll watch the baby we'll fix your computer um, we'll, we'll uh, serve and protect as uh, law enforcement yeah. we'll uh, set up your uh, web page you know we'll uh, right. do what we yeah, so we'll do that's the worst things. don't do that because it makes it hard for potential customers to gauge what you actually do right. if I go to a website and I see like you said I wash babies cook clothes oh, walk dogs right. and I also am a computer software engineer I'm gonna be like you're none of those things because you're you know a, a master of none Right. You know, and that really gives a bad taste in people's mouth because it looks like you have no clue, you don't have a cohesive go-to-market strategy, you don't have a 